Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on working with complex roots with a Casio ClassWiz FX991EX. Let's take a look at the question. We've got GZ, so a function of Z, which is Z cubed minus 15Z squared plus CZ plus D equals zero, where C and D are members of a set of real numbers. So we know that C and D are both real numbers. Given that 3 and 6 plus i are roots of the equation, gz equals 0, we have to write down the other complex root of the equation and then part b, find the value of c and the value of d. So if we take a look at part a, write down the other complex root of the equation, well, we're already given the real root, which is 3, given that uh, 3 and 6 plus i are the roots, so the real root is 3, and one of the complex roots, 6 plus i. Where we see right down there, that indicates that there's no more calculation that we need to do. We don't need to do anything to actually work out what the second root is. We just use our knowledge to be able to look at the information we've been given and write it down. And the complex root that we're given is 6 plus i. And we should note that the other complex root will be the complex conjugate of the given root that we have there. So that would be six minus i. Just swapping the plus out for a minus gives us the complex conjugate. That's going to be the other complex root of this particular equation. So fairly straightforward, no extra working out. We just need to recognize that it's the complex conjugate that gives us that second complex root. So we have all three roots of the equation now, three, six plus i and six minus i. Part B is going to take a little bit more work. Find the value of C and the value of D. We only have the roots to work with. What we're going to do is to work to form a cubic equation which we can then compare with what we have at the top here, GZ, and we can uh, discover what C and D will be. Now essentially this equation has come from, well, the factor that gave us the real root, the real root is three, so the factor that would have given us that is z minus 3. We're also going to have a quadratic that would have given us the complex roots, 6 plus i and 6 minus i. Uh, I'm just going to label that as z squared plus pz plus q. So I introduce p and q because those uh, figures are unknown at the moment. But we know that this quadratic would multiply by our other factor and that will give us our full cubic equation. So our job now is to discover what P and Q are, using the complex roots to help us multiply it by a factor Z minus three, and that should give us our cubic. So we're gonna set up a factorized form of a quadratic. But before we do that, we're just going to label our complex roots. Now, it's quite difficult to use alpha and beta as letters to represent these complex roots. So we can assign alpha to be six plus I, and beta to be 6 minus i. And if we're setting up the quadratic in a factorized form, what we can say is that that quadratic would be z minus alpha, so minus the first complex root, times z minus beta, so minus the second complex root. So we've got a quadratic in factorized form using this alpha and beta notation. And it's that notation that's going to help us to discover what the values p and q are going to be. Let's just expand out this quadratic as it's written, these two factors. So let's expand out these brackets. We're going to end up with z squared, z times z, minus alpha z, minus beta z, and then plus, because we'd have two negatives multiplying, plus alpha beta. So plus alpha times beta on the end. Just to make it a little bit more simple, we're just going to factorise the middle terms there, what we can say is that z squared minus alpha minus beta, z is the middle term, plus alpha beta. And that's going to help us to find out what these values are. Now we're going to use the calculator to help us discover what these coefficients are. Now we're going to input the complex values that we have, and we're going to use a and b because we don't have alpha and beta on the calculator to store those in. So let's input the first one. We need to go to complex mode and we can just double check that with the little i at the top. Let's input our first complex root, 6 plus i. We're going to store that in a, that's our alpha. 
6 minus i, we're going to store that in b, that's our beta. Now we can actually use the calculator to work out what our terms are. Let's start with the constant at the end, which is alpha beta. This is actually going to be our q from the equation that we'd set up. So alpha and beta is going to give us our constant, our q. So all we're going to do is do a, b, so alpha a, alpha b, and press equals. And here we have 37. This is going to be our constant. So it's done alpha times beta, 37. That's going to be our constant on the end. That's going to be our Q value. So we know that from the quadratic. And then the middle term that we've got there, the coefficient for the Z term is minus alpha minus beta. So let's do minus A, so minus alpha A, minus B, and press equals. And here we have our answer, negative 12 negative 12, that is going to be our p. So our p from the equation that we set up, the coefficient in front of the z term. So let's rewrite out the quadratic as we now know it. We know that the quadratic is z squared minus 12z plus 37. That's the quadratic part of it. We also know the factor that gives us the real root, which is z minus 3. So what we can say is that our cubic function would be z minus 3, z squared minus 12z plus 37 equals 0. What we need to do now is to multiply it so that we've got the full expanded cubic equation and then make a comparison. So if we just use maybe a multiplication grid or however you're most comfortable doing that, we can multiply these two functions together. I've set it up in a grid here and you can see all the different sections that we've got. z times z squared gives us z cubed. We've got two z squared terms, minus 3z squared, minus 12z squared. That gives us minus 15z squared. That's good. That matches what we've already been given in the question. So let's work out the z term. We've got plus 36z plus 37z. It's come from z times 37 minus 12z times minus 3. Add those two together. We can see that it's 73z. So our, our c... Our coefficient of the z term is 73. And then the last term, which would be our d, our constant, is 37 times minus 3. That gives us negative 111. So our final term, our d, is minus 111. So we found both c and d. We can now use the calculator to go back and check that. So we're going to essentially go and solve this cubic and find our roots which we already know but this will provide confirmation for us so from the menu down to equation function we want to choose two for polynomial three because it's a cubic obviously we're substituting our z for an x in here so that is one x cubed minus 15 x squared plus 73 x minus 111 Press equals and the roots we should get are the same as what we established. So we've got the real root of 3, first complex root 6 plus i, that's what we're given. And then lastly, the second complex root 6 minus i. So we've got confirmation there that that cubic, the result that we've got, gives us the same roots that we were given in the question and that we found in part a. So we can be sure then that we've got the right cubic and we know that c and d are correct. There we go, how we can use the FX991EX to support our working with complex roots and how we can go back and find a cubic equation from when we're given the complex roots for that equation. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Calculator Guide.